So as March is coming to an end, it's March 31st, 2022. Uh, we're going to actually take a look at all the trades and we're going to be ranking them. So we're doing a little, you guys know how this is. It's a trend amongst a lot of uh, YouTubers and a lot of podcasters and stuff, but it's a tier list where we do a tier list for all of these um, uh, in a certain category. So we're going to do a tier list for all of the big time trades that happened in March. Uh, there were 11 can you believe that in one month we had 11 trades, some of them being blockbuster trades, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz. I mean, some big time trades went on and there were also some uh, all pros and pro bowlers traded away to other teams as well. So we're going to give our little uh, opinions on a lot of this. I know I'm going to make some people mad here. Um, I got I'm a pretty opinionated guy, but I know a lot of you guys are passionate as well. So make sure to leave me a uh, uh, Leave uh, whatever your opinions are as well for this. Uh, we're going to start it off with uh, Russell Wilson, who was the first blockbuster trade of this offseason. Uh, Russell Wilson going over to Denver Broncos. I did not expect the, the Seahawks to actually trade away the uh, Russell Wilson. It happening was kind of a surprise. The more you look on it, the more it makes sense as Seahawks needed to go into a rebuild here. So uh, in this trade, they gave away uh, Russell Wilson. The Seahawks did in order to acquire Drew Locke, Shelby Harris, Noah Fant, two first round draft picks, two second round draft picks and a fifth round draft pick. So we're going to do this trade in the Denver sake for the Denver Broncos. We're actually going to put this right into S tier for this trade, simply because the Broncos don't even need any of these players or draft picks. They don't. Why? Because they're a win now team. They're already a complete offense, a complete offense through and through. Their playmakers are elite, even without Noah Fant, who I I was I said no offense very underrated but still they're loaded on offense and the defensive side of the ball is the same story so for that reason because of their coaching staff because they have a, a future hall of fame quarterback now who I believe he's 34 yeah he has another what six seven ten years left in him I mean we see quarterbacks play till they're 45 now so Russell Wilson could have another 10 years left in him especially because he relatively does stay healthy um I know he suffered with an injury this last season, but overall, he has stayed healthy for majority of career. For the Denver Broncos' sake, because they're the one who acquired Russell Wilson, we're putting this trade right into S tier. And Bronc <laughs> Seahawks going to a rebuild is just weird to see. I I thought the Seahawks actually could still have a chance in the in the NFC West. I believed it to be true, but looks like they're going through a rebuild now. So 70 year old Pete Carroll is going through a rebuild. Can you believe that? Okay, Carson Wentz is next. Carson Wentz got traded to Washington from the Indianapolis Colts. This is the most confusing trades for Washington's sake. For Washington, I'm going to put it into D tier. I am. Why do you need Carson Wentz? Why did Washington, what did they give up? Washington gave up a second round pick, a third round pick, and a conditional third round pick. But they also got a second round pick and seventh round pick and Carson Wentz. So they gave up really nothing for Carson Wentz. And I don't see in any case why they would actually want Carson Wentz. We're going to put him into C tier because it's the NFC East. And I mean, it's the NFC East. Washington can win that division with Carson Wentz. However, because of this, Carson Wentz is probably going to play, what, five games next year. It's FedEx Field. It's a cursed stadium. And all in all. I'd expect to see Taylor Heineke start a majority of this next season. So not a big time trade really right there. Carson Wentz, um, I hate to see it because Carson Wentz was one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the league at one point, and he's completely fallen off uh, fallen off over the last few years. Uh, Indianapolis was not great. He was playing behind an amazing offensive line, had a, what only had to hand off to Jonathan Taylor 30 times a game, and yet they still missed the playoffs. Uh, so it's going to be questionable how he's going to look on that Washington offense. They're going to need to give him a lot of help in order for Washington to be able to compete in that division. And hopefully on the defensive side of the ball, they can stay healthy because that's been their biggest issue as well. So uh, for Washington, we're going to put in a C tier. Who really cares? I mean, it's not that it's not a big of a game changer. It would have been a few years ago. Uh, but again, Washington should look to a new quarterback. Next up, we have Amari Cooper going to Cleveland. For Cleveland's sake, I'm going to immediately put this into A tier. Because here's the thing. For the Dallas Cowboys, they were going to cut Amari Cooper regardless. And the Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Browns got him for just a fifth round pick. You're getting one of the best receivers in the league. In my opinion, uh, undisputed top 10 receiver in the league. And he's paired up with Deshaun Watson now. I mean, the Cleveland Browns are running it for a Super Bowl at this point with uh, Deshaun Watson on that offense with Amari uh, Cooper on that offense. Now, um, I do believe they also added another wide receiver. If I have that right, they have the best running back duo in all of football and the best off interior offensive lineman in all of football. So that is an elite offense right there. We're moving that into a tier for their sake. Uh, still a little questionable of what 
can I really happen with Baker Mayfield? Uh, but still, Cleveland Browns, eighth year getting uh, Amari Cooper for just a fifth round pick. And I believe he's only $20 million a year, uh, which is definitely worth it for a wide receiver of his talent. Next up, we have Yannick Ngakwe, who was traded to Indianapolis. This went under the radar. Uh, for Indianapolis' sake, who would, what did Indianapolis give up? Indianapolis gave up Rakia Sin. That's right. Okay, so for Indianapolis' sake, we're putting this into B tier. Um, Yannick Ngakwe going to that defense. Indy has built one of the best defensive fronts in all of football. With uh, Quiddy Pay, who was formerly a first-round draft pick for them, and Yannick Ngakwe on the outside. On the inside, you have DeForest Buckner, and you have uh, Grover Stewart. So they've built one of the, be the best defensive fronts in all of football. Their linebacker group has already been one of the best with uh, Darius Leonard. Uh, they got Bo Bobby Okereke. I mean, just an elite defense right there, and their corners are great as well. So they gave up Rock Yassin uh, for Yannick Ngakwe. So that's even trade right there, it feels like. Uh, and then Rock Yassin, I think, going to Las Vegas will actually be a starter at cornerback for them, if I have that right, because they did just lose Casey Hayward, I believe. So um, still, I mean, a solid trade, right? It went under the radar, but still, Yannick has played for, what, five teams the last three years? The guy's been bouncing around the league and is still one of the best pass rushers, in my opinion. So him going into that defense will be huge. And Indianapolis is going for their division next year, which they can easily win because they have the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars. Should be four easy wins for them right there. Next up, we have Khalil Mack, who was traded from Bears to LA Chargers. A lot of people are going to hate me for this. So LA Chargers are coming off of a season where they were the worst defense in all of football. And the reason why was because they were awful against the run and their cornerbacks were garbage. They tackled free agency perfectly, bringing in JC Jackson and a couple of other core starters on that defense. Problem is them trading for Khalil Mack. They gave up a second round pick and a sixth round pick for a player who's coming off of foot surgery. Not only that, but the guy's worth quarterback money. For that reason, because of how much they have to pay him because he's coming off of surgery and giving up a six, uh, sixth round pick and a second round pick, I'm actually going to put this in F tier for the Chargers' sake. I mean, they might have built one of the best pass rushing duo now with Khalil Mack and Joey Burrow, or Joey, um, or, and, uh, 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 his name, uh, Joey Bosa. They've built one of the best pass rushing duos right there. I still don't see them taking control of that division with this Khalil Mack trade and it's holding them back for how much money they're going to have to give them. So we don't know if it's still going to be the Khalil Mack it was in 2019 in uh, 2018. Uh, for that reason, I'm putting into F tier because they gave up too much for a player who's worth this much and is coming off of surgery. And the, uh, another reason why I put this in F tier was simply because the Chargers could have brought in anybody else in free agency to be a pass rusher. They had a, they had a chance to bring in Chandler Jones. They had a chance to bring in um, Hassan Reddick. They had a chance to bring in Von Miller. They had a chance to bring in multiple big name pass rushers, and instead they went for a players coming off of surgery surgery and is worth this much money so for that reason for the chargers sake i'm actually going to put it into f tier because i don't think it was a good trade at all for chargers for bears i would actually put this in s tier because bears would have honestly cut khalil mack if it wasn't for trading him away next up we have shaq mason who was traded from uh, new england to tampa I've seen a lot of players now go from New England to Tampa. Jack Mason is still one of the best guards in the league, in my opinion, despite him being, what is it, like 29, 30 years old now. Uh, but for that reason, I'm actually going to put this in A tier. This is a trade that went under the radar. Uh, Shaq Mason was traded to Tampa Bay for a fifth round draft pick. That's great. God, amazing. I mean, for Tampa, it doesn't, they don't even care about the draft picks right now, Tampa, because they're going all in right now. They don't need to look to having future draft picks to going for future players because right now they are a Super Bowl team. They are a Super Bowl contender right now, especially in the worst division in all of football. The Saints completely collapsed in March. They are just one of the worst teams after this uh, offseason. And then the Panthers are the Panthers. I mean, Sam Darnold's their quarterback. And then the Falcons also just got rid of Matt Ryan. So they're completely owning their division right now. And actually, for the Buccaneers' sake, I would go ahead and put this into S tier. Now nah, we're keeping it in A tier. Just because they've built a top five offensive line to protect for the best quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. I mean, they're completely owning that division next season if they are able to stay healthy. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they're also loaded. So for that reason, they've built a complete team with Shaq Mason. He's going to be playing right guard for them, I believe. Uh, they built a pretty complete team. He's still one of the best guards in the league. I mean, he would he's not as good as he was when uh, New England's dynasty was going on, uh, in my opinion, but he's still one of the best in the league. And for that reason, it was a great trade. This went under the radar, but Shaq Mason being one of the best guards going to Tampa to protect for his old quarterback, Tom Brady, great move for their sake. On over here, we have Devontae Adams, who was traded from Green Bay to Las Vegas. 
immediate S tier trade right here. I don't believe there can be anything else you can argue. I have argued so many times Devontae Adams, the best route runner and pass catcher in all of football, and one of the best after the catch. One of the best, and that's only because there are some amazing wide receivers after the catch. He's still amazing after the catch. He does everything correctly, and all Vegas had to give up was a first rounder and a second rounder for the best, in my opinion, the best wide receiver in all of football. An undisputed top three wide receiver in football. You can't even argue that he's not top three at this point. So he's going to go play with his old quarterback, Derek Carr. This was a great trade for Las Vegas to make to give up just a first and a second rounder for the best quarterback or best wide receiver in all of football. On top of that, they did make him the highest paid wide receiver, which was well respected. I have no problem with players of his talent demanding money, which he did with Green Bay. He was going to hold off until uh, either a trade or getting the money that he deserves. And for that reason, this goes into S tier. So you have two NFC West teams, uh, Seattle Seahawks uh, giving up Russell Wilson to the Denver Broncos and also Vegas acquiring uh, Devontae from Green Bay. So those are two amazing trades, game-changing blockbuster trades that will completely help out their team. Raiders are a competitor. They really are. They are after this trade. They were a wide receiver away from being a good team this last season. Um, their defense is still phenomenal. I mean, they have some of the best uh, defensive uh, linebackers in all of football. I love Denzel Perriman against the run. Um, and then up the middle, they're just an amazing defense through and through. So uh, Raiders are one of the more underrated dark horse Super Bowl contenders. And then obviously Broncos just became a Super Bowl contender with Russell Wilson going up to that team. So two amazing trades uh, by both teams giving up future draft picks because who needs draft picks when you're a win now team? You really don't need draft picks. We've seen this happen so many times. This is what Buccaneers did. This is what uh, the this is what the LA Rams did the last two seasons. And what did they also do? Win a Super Bowl. You have to risk your future to be a win now team. And it's what the two teams are doing and great for them. Cleveland Browns, second trade on this list, also traded for Amari Cooper by trading for Deshaun Watson. Okay, so I'm a, I'm really torn in the Deshaun Watson trade because obviously I've I've argued that Watson is the third most talented quarterback in all of football, not third best, third most talented quarterback. And it's so questionable on whether this was a good trade or not because what Cleveland gave up, they gave up three first round draft picks, two fourth round draft picks and a third round draft picks. So they gave up they gave up day 1, day 2 draft picks and five of them for Deshaun Watson, not only that, but they made Deshaun Watson, they gave him a contract that was fully guaranteed. And because they gave him a fully guaranteed contract, and you can't even guarantee that he's going to play one game with you because he's not completely done with his uh, law stuff, we're going to put it into C tier. Okay, it, this can easily slide into S tier in the coming years. But as of right now, giving him a fully guaranteed contract was not smart. And giving up this much for a quarterback that you really don't even know. I mean, you don't know if he's going to play. And for that reason, we have him in seats here because for all we know, the, uh, Roger Goodell has every reason to put him on the commissioner's exempt list right now because of his allegations. He has every reason to do so. And for that, we're putting in a seat here simply because of the contract that they gave Deshaun Watson uh, could screw the Cleveland uh, Browns over in the future. But if he's healthy to play, I would put it more into A tier or S tier for that matter, uh, because he is one of the best quarterbacks in all of football. Uh, it's questionable on whether the Browns are even going to be able to compete with their division right now. I mean, that Mari Cooper and uh, Deshaun Watson are going to build one of the best uh, wide receiver quarterback connections. Um, but with that being said, they're in a division with Cincinnati Bengals. They're going to be competitors for a long time now. Ravens, if Ravens can stay healthy. They're a Super Bowl, dark horse Super Bowl candidate. It's a tough division there in the AFC North. And for that reason, I have Deshaun going down to C tier. Um, you can argue even higher, but it's just the contract. The contract is the contract. And that's the problem. All right. Next up, we have Robert Woods, who was traded from L.A. to uh, Tennessee. So Tennessee Titans are replacing Julio Jones with Robert Woods. Solid. Okay, why not? Robert Woods is coming off of a torn ACL uh, and his team won a Super Bowl without him. So I guess they don't really need Robert Woods, um, but they're going to pair him up now with AJ Gr or uh, they're going to pair him up now with uh, who's who's there? Uh, AJ Brown. There's his name. AJ Brown at wide receiver. Obviously, Derrick Henry, their amazing offense right there uh, for that reason. Them trading for Robert Woods. It was they could have signed a wide receiver in free agency. I really thought Ellen Robinson went under the radar and he was signed with the Rams. That was the most underrated free agent signing, in my opinion. Allen Robinson going to play with the Rams. Uh, Rams giving up him up was the right move. He is an injury prone player. We're going to actually, for Tennessee Titans sake, we're going to put it into B tier simply because the Titans needed another wide receiver. 
and uh aj brown aj aj brown has suffered with a injury every year so far i believe if i have that right julio jones is an aging veteran uh bringing in robert woods to add to their offense was crucial especially with derrick henry's injuries as well injuries have been killing that titans team and adding robert woods was a good addition to their offense and titans can run it back they can like i said they're in a very easy division like i've talked about how the colts can win their division next year division's not that tough with the houston texans being the worst and jaguars are the Jaguars? I mean, do you what is the Jaguars ceiling? Eight, six, five wins next year. I mean, for that reason, I, ha I have it going all the way to B tier. Next up, we have Matt Ryan, who was traded from Atlanta to Indianapolis. Matt Ryan has the most overpaid contract in all of football. He had, what is it? A forty-six point four million dollar cap hit next year. I believe that's second in all of football behind Rodgers, if I have that right, or maybe it's first. 46.4, it might be more than Rodgers next season. So he is the highest cap hit out of any NFL player this next season. And in 2023, he has 35.2. So next season, uh, all the money won't have to be paid from Indianapolis because Atlanta still owes him some money in dead salary cap. They only gave up a third round draft pick and he's a huge increase from Carson Wentz because of his injuries. Um, You know what? We'll put it into beats here. Just because he's an increase from Carson Wentz, and for that reason, uh, Indianapolis can win their division next year with Matt Ryan at quarterback. He's an aging player. I believe he's 34 right now, and he is a huge, huge cap hit. So for that reason, I don't have it being any higher than that, but I believe it was the right move for them to make. It was a needed move um, in order for them to win their division because they are technically a win now team. Now, they, des they do need to add some players, especially at wide receiver right now. Um, so I'm not sure quite how their offense is going to be able to run next year. I mean, you just hand it off to Jonathan Taylor 30 times a game. I guess you can beat most teams that way, but you still do need some wide receivers on that offense. As right now, I think it's Michael Pittman Jr. is their starting wide receiver. As he, In my opinion, that guy should be starting at a slot wide receiver, uh, wide receiver three role for him. Uh, next up, we have Tyreek Hill, and this is the last trade, the most recent blockbuster big-time trade. And for the Kansas and for the Miami Dolphins. Sorry, Dolphins fans. I've talked about it a lot. You gave up too much. You made him the highest paid receiver of all time. And with that, are you guys going to get a Super Bowl out of it? I have I have my doubts with Tua and, and uh, new head coach Mike McDaniel because we haven't seen anything what they're able to do. And for that reason, for the Dolphins trading for Tyreek Hill, I'm going to sneak it into detail just because I've talked about it so many times. You gave up a first round draft pick and a second round draft pick, both picks in the top 50. Those are two high draft picks that the Dolphins needed in order to really restart their team. They could have drafted a wide receiver in the first round, fourth round pick. They gave up a fourth round pick in next year and a sixth round pick in next year. So that's five draft picks with two of them being top draft picks and one thing we know about this upcoming draft class is that you can find elite receivers in round three round four like you didn't have to give up this much draft capital for Tyreek Hill and then not only that not only did you give up five draft picks but you made him the highest paid receiver of all time when in my opinion he's not the best he really isn't now yeah you built one of the best receiving duels with Jalen Waddle but with that being said what is Miami's ceiling I mean the AFC is a stacked conference there are so many teams right now undoubtedly easily un objectively better than the Miami Dolphins right now and I'm not saying the Dolphins can't sneak into the playoffs I'm not saying the Dolphins can't uh, make it even to the even to the divisional round I'm not saying they can't be a competitor what I'm saying is that they're not this isn't a game changing they have so many more needs than just uh, Tyreek Hill in order to rebuild that team uh, to what they are right now because Tua who knows how he's going to look when healthy the guy's been great don't get me wrong I'm not saying the guy's been awful when healthy he's been an amazing quarterback but the problem is is right now the guy is not healthy he plays a third of every season Mike McDaniel we have no idea what the guy's going to bring to the table he's never been a head coach in all of football we really don't know what the Dolphins are going to do and for that reason I have the Dolphins getting Tyreek Hill in D tier and I have the Chargers getting Khalil Mack in F tier because of how much you have to pay Khalil Mack and he simply could have just signed someone in free agency you didn't have to give up this much for him but easily the two best trades Broncos acquiring Russell Wilson was amazing. Broncos fans should be ecstatic about that trade. And then also with the Raiders should be super excited to have the best receiver in football, in my opinion, uh, going to their team in LA. So our LV, I guess it would be. So great trades for uh, most teams. I believe Shaq Mason going to Bucks was under the radar. Great trade for them. Uh, all in all, though, I just 
I have my doubts with these two trades. I have my doubts with the Chargers and I have my doubts with the Dolphins in order to compete in a, such a stacked conference, uh, giving up this much, paying them this much money when they're more than just one piece away from competing.